Hi, I'm Eagle, I'm a data scientist living in London, and welcome to another episode of this time series Crash Course. In this video, we're going to talk about cross validation, particularly how you can apply cross validation to time series, as it's quite different to normal machine learning models. The things we'll cover in this video are what is cross validation, how cross validation is different from time series, and applying cross validation to high parameter tune our forecasting model. So let's get into it. For this video, we're going to work through this notebook A on the screen here to tell us all about cross validation and why it is different for time series. So we'll first begin with answering a question, well, like, you know, what is cross validation? So cross validation, like I've written here, is quite a staple process inside any machine learning model or statistical model, and it's used for our data scientists. Uh, but for time series, it's more niche. So normally what we use cross, that cross validation for, as I've written here, is that it helps us determine the best model and parameters. Um, and what it does, it basically splits our data set into different parts, normally a training and testing set. Um, and so like the training set is where you build your model and the testing set is where you evaluate it. The point of this is that the the model that you're building has no, it's not, you're not, you're not training on data that, you're not evaluating on data that it's trained on, right? By training it on a separate set of data and evaluating on, on, on some data it hasn't seen before, aka the test set, it's being a fair, basically a like judge of character or how well it is because it hasn't seen that data before and you're just judging how well its performance measures on that. This is quite a common thing in data science. I'm sure you, most of you probably know about the cross validation and the idea of training and test split. Um, but the you know cross validation is a bit more than that. So the classic is a train test split, like I just described, but normally it's taken one step further. And like I've written here, is that we can split it numerous times um, by varying the data we train and test on. So instead of just having you know one train set and one test set, what we can do we can break up the whole set into different components. So a good way of showing this about visualization. So if I just run this cell here. Again, this cell is something I just devised that don't worry too much about it. It's more to show an example of how we um, how we more how we visualize cross validation as opposed to code doing anything. But again, if you're interested in this code, it's linked in the description below in the Jupyter notebook. So what we can do, like I said, is I like take it one step further and that we can split cross validation into numerous things. So instead of doing this classic approach here in, in this top one where we basically 80% of our data is training data and then 20% is test. We're going to repeat this process, but this time we'll change which is our training and test data. So you see here, we are evaluating on the first 120 data points and then testing on the remaining uh, 20. The next split, what we will do is that we will shift this test back a bit. And so we will then train on this bit that we didn't train before previously and then test on the, on. Uh, on the data we trained previously. But this is still okay because we're not training on a test data. These are gonna be separate models built for each of these splits. So the point across our data is that you're gonna use all of your data to train on and test on. And that way you'll build a more robust model because it's training on the whole data and also being evaluated on the whole data. So it's very niche, or well not niche, it's a very cool method um, to make sure your model is as good as it could be because you're using the whole data available to you, not putting anything to waste. But again, I'm sure most of you have heard of cross validation, it's quite a common term. And if you've worked in any data science project, you've probably used this to tune your hyperparameters for you. Now, for time series, this process doesn't quite work because in time series, our index is not just a simple row, it's the index is time based. So you can see a problem with this in that this example, take the bottom one. If you're training on this data, say from time step, whatever this is, 29 onwards, then you're gonna evaluate on data that is before 29 onwards. You're kind of leaking information because of time series that you wanna predict into the future. What you're doing here is kind of like called backcasting. And that's not necessarily what you want if you're building a forecasting model. Similarly, this one's even worse because you got basic information before and after your test set. And so in other words, you can see a way that you're leaking information from your test set to your training set. And this is basically something you don't want um, because again, your, your, your model is not fair. It's, it's, not, it's biased and because it has, will have some information encoded from, because it, because it was trained future in time. And so it's no longer a fair comparison. So as I've written here, cross validation is not an effective or balanced strategy on forecasting models due to their temporal dependency. So for time series, we always predict into the future. 
and the above approach will be trading on data that is further in time than the valuation test data, and so we'll get data leakage, basically what I explained. Now the way we overcome this problem is as shown here from this other plot I've generated. Again, this 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 like plot comes from this one function that I've just made or hashed together. Again, check this out in the description if you're interested in the Jupyter notebook. And what we can do is then we only use the whole data set because we can't avoid this. We want to avoid this data leakage. But we what we can do is that have like a rolling test set. So you see here that we would train on the first 20 data points and evaluate on the next 20. Then we'll add this test set for our next split and have the next and then have the next 20 data points as a test set. And you see you get you get a picture, right? But looking at this plot, what we're having is the test set is always in the future and the training set is always behind, but we can have a rolling window where we add the test set every time we want to do a split. Now I hope this makes sense. Again, I think this is quite intuitive. The main thing is when you're building a forecasting model and you want to do cross-validation, always make sure your test set is forward in time to your training set to avoid any form of data leakage. That is the key point I want you to take home. Right, now let's see it in action. So what we can do is that we can use hopper parameter tuning um, to perform our cross-validation. So or we can use cross-validation to help our high parameter tuning. So what we're going to do is that we're going to plot a basic airline passenger volume data set. Again, it's really loaded in, but as you see here, this is the data I've been using throughout this course. Um, it just shows the US airline passenger volume uh, in the decade of the 1950s. Don't worry too much about this. Uh, again, it's linked in the description if you're playing around in your own time. <clears throat> the main point is that it's it's just a really nice data to work with because it's got obvious trend and seasonality, and so it's just really convenient for us to measure um, and build models with. The next thing I want to do is that we're going to build this hyperparameter tuning CV function. Now, all this is going to do is that, without going into too much detail, is that it's going to find the best gamma smoothing level for the exponential smoothing model. In other words, which is going to be the Holt Winters model. If you're not too familiar with exponential smoothing or the Holt Winters model, make sure you check out the other video in this playlist because that's where I describe what exponential smoothing is, what a Holt Winters model is, and from that we can, you know, you can get an intuition behind what we're trying to do here more. It's not really needed, but I really recommend it because I'm not going to cover what exponential smoothing is in this video. So what we do is that we're going to basically split using this time series split um, uh, function, which we can get from sklearn really nicely, as I've shown here. So it's done for us. We don't have to build this by ourselves. Then what we will do is that we will, for our list of gammas, gamma can range from 0 to 1. We'll just create a list, and we'll just iterate through those gammas. Then we're going to build a model here, model exponential smoothing. And what we're going to do, we're going to evaluate on the valid test. So we're going to build on a train test. Um, which I split here, as you can see here, we get our data frame, split into the train index, valid, and then get our valid index. And then we're gonna build the model, get a forecast, use mean percentage error, um, mean absolute percentage error to evaluate the forecast, append it to the, uh, you know, append the gamma and the errors to our, to a list. And from then on, we have a data frame with, you know, with the value of this gamma, the seasonal smoothing factor, and also the error associated with that value. And that's all we're going to do. Um, and then we're just going to plot that as a result. I hope that makes sense. Again, there's no books in the description if you want to go this in your own time. But I think it's pretty straightforward. Nothing too complicated here. It's more just intuition we're trying to gain behind using time series split. And then this is an example of how you can use it. And then we can run the cell, ignoring all this overflow nonsense. And these are results. So like I said, what we have here on the x-axis is our gamma value, which range between 0 and 1, our various values, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and we can see the MAPE. So basically, from what we can see, 0 0.7 gives the best MAPE, so, or the lowest like error. So it, you know the best moving seasonal parameter is 0 0.7 in this case for this model. Um, and that's very easy how you apply um, cross-validation and time series with hyperparameter tuning to help you build the best model possible. Let's quickly recap of the key points discussed in this video. Cross-validation is a very useful tool inside data science. Because it allows you to train and test over the whole data, it means you utilize the whole data set and build the best model possible. However, for time series, this can be a problem because your test set may be backwards in time to your training set, and therefore you might have some data leakage 
due to this temporal dependence inside forecasting models. To avoid this, all you got to do is make sure your testing set is forward in time to your training set and therefore there will be no data leakage and your model will be valid. This is easily done in Python using the sklearn time series split function as we showed in this notebook and it provides really good results in a very easy API interface. So the main take home message from this video is that when you're building a forecasting model, always make sure that your testing set is forward in time to your training set to avoid any form of data leakage. This is the most important rule and you should really, really think about this when you're building any model. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, then make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.